within 15 or 20 minutes, every so often I'd pick up 4,000 views 20 minutes later, 4,000 more. You know, the fight with the Mike Tyson fight coming out and people were saying, oh, you should fight this boxer and this boxer. And, and like people are pretty much ripping on it, like for seven or eight days. I mean, my phone, my phone, <laughs> <laughs> my phone was like dinging all day, every day with like mostly negative comments, some positive. Video has taken the world of digital marketing by storm over the last decade. My name is Parker DeCover, owner of Prime Edge Media, a full service video marketing company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And since 2020, it's been my mission to help business owners across the nation harness the sheer power of video marketing. And the Camera Roll Chronicles is my attempt to supplement that with the industry's latest trends, as well as stories and lessons that we've learned from client projects and even special guests from adjacent industries. So without further ado, quiet on set, please. And action. Uh, Parker G with the social G here for your Friday morning tip. <laughs> it's catchy, isn't it? It is! <laughs> Guys, welcome back to another episode of the uh, Camera Roll Chronicles. Today I'm here with the social G herself, Mary Gunther from uh, the Social G Co. And today we're going to talk a lot about video marketing, um, especially on social and building your brand on social so that you can attract the people that you want to actually speak to. I'm gonna let Mary kind of chat about what she does and, uh, cause I don't wanna butcher what you do. Um, then yeah, we'll get into it. So I own the Social G Co. Began that formally at the beginning of 2023. We specialize in social media marketing. I have been thinking of a tagline for a long time and I keep coming back to just, we do good social media. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I mean, it's true. But we do try and really personalize um, the content for each different business. So I think that's kind of our area of our sweet spot, if you will, is um, doing, you know, taking the extra steps to make sure the content is authentic and genuine um, to each business and business owner. So it's yeah. not just cookie cutter. So that's kind of our main um, part of our business. So full scale social media marketing from content creation, from calendar, content creation, analytics, and rinse and repeat year round because it never ends. And then um, I also do a lot of coaching and training with people. So a lot of people like feel semi-confident in how to you know, push out their content or maybe they're not or maybe they just need some guidance but they're, they feel like they can produce it and push it. Um, I work with a lot of people on just ideas and content and just helping to guide them more. So um, a couple different areas of our business but um, people... Um, it's growing because, you know, people need help and they're frustrated and we try and yep. help them to feel less frustrated and whether that's we take it all or we just help them either way is fine. For sure. That's awesome. I'm, I, so I'm actually curious and this wasn't on our docket of questions, but where did the name come from? The like, it, yeah. Like, is it just your last name or is there something else like in there? It pretty much, um, you know, a fun part about being a business owner, as you can relate to, and this is why I think we also know how to help brand or work with other business owners, is that whole like process of when you think about your name and your brand colors and who, you know, what you stand for. So um, I have always been a very social person. Like as far as like just, I like to get people together and food and drinks. So I kind of was like social, social media, maybe there's something there. Um, and then I just kind of started seeing what was available even because yeah. you kind of got to know like what's, that too. <laughs> what's available like domain wise. Um, so Social G was taken, but Social G Co, my company was not. Um, and I, and then the G obviously for my last name, but then also kind of the play on like, you know, OG, social G. And I was like, that's kind of catchy. And it's just kind of, a, it's kind of just felt good, felt right. Cause I do think part of, and this goes for your content and your whole company and your brand like has to feel good for like, if it doesn't feel good to you, like, right. you know, it, it kind of could come off not natural. So that's, yeah. Thanks for asking. I don't think anyone's <laughs> asked me that before. So. Really? No. Oh, let's go. <laughs> All right. I want to talk about your viral video that you just had. Yeah. So 
I, I only watched a little bit of the, like the comments video that you made, but um, to, to kind of catch everybody up, let's, let's talk about what happened first, and then we'll talk about kind of what the aftermath was and all that good stuff. Okay, so um, my trainer, Kaylee Weinsma, with Transform, shout out. Um, she took the video. Um, I was there hitting the bag, like boxing gloves, hitting a bag with two other women. And she just took the video and she sometimes does that because she knows I like to share yeah. some of my fitness stuff. Like, cause I've been on my own like journey to get, get healthier and get fit. So I'm like, cool. Yeah. I'll like take a, like, let me get that video. So I made a reel from it. Um, and I liked, it was on my personal Mary Gunther. So Instagram. And so I like to kind of make jokes. So, um, and I've also been hearing a lot about this Mike Tyson fight coming up in mm -hmm. July. It's like, it's been like, kind of like you hear about it. It's a culture. Uh -huh. I feel like it's kind of coming up culturally. Yeah. So I made a joke about Mike Tyson, how he bit Evander Holyfield's ear yeah. off. And I was saying how I have like that Mike Tyson ear biting energy. And then, <laughs> but like how, of course I do. Cause I'm a suburban woman. And that's our, like, something about, like, that's just our regular energy. So, like, that was the, that was the real, that was, you know, kind of my, the, a joke. So, here's what I think happened with it. Kaylee also posted the boxing video, but not with that spin on it. About the Mike Tyson thing and the mm -hmm. suburban women thing. Mm -hmm. And, like, but mine, I think, took off because I think it was, A, I think my boxing form is horrible, which... It wasn't a boxing video to train people, but right. I think boxing, the boxing community is very particular mm. and my form is really bad, but I'm like that, of course it is. I'm, I was just hitting the bag. Um, so I got a lot of feedback on the form and then it started going and spinning into like, you know, the fight with the Mike Tyson fight coming out and people were saying, oh, you should fight this boxer and this boxer and, and like people are pretty much ripping on it. So, like for seven or eight days, I mean, my phone, my <laughs> phone, <laughs> my phone was like dinging all day, every day with like mostly negative comments, some positive. So I just think it was a mixture between kind of like the culture of maybe like that community, the fight coming up. And then once it takes hold, what blew my mind about it is like within 15 or 20 minutes, every so often I'd it'd pick up. It would, 4, views 20 minutes later, 4,000 more. I mean, once it picks up a certain steam, it's really amazing to just see it. Cause it was like, I was tracking it sort of. And it, once it takes hold, it's really like there's, it's, it goes, it's, yeah. that's it. It's like, I don't know if it's the algorithm or it's just exponentially, but that's what happened. So I think it just taught me a lot about how it works or how things can look when it goes viral. I do mm -hmm. think mine lasted probably more days than most maybe that burn out. But sure. either way, um, I also did, one thing I did do was respond to every comment. Most of the comments I responded to, even the negative ones, because I was trying to push two to see, right? Like, like more engagement, more engagement, more engagement. And then people would be like, comment back to me. So point being is it wasn't overall positive, but I took it in stride. I don't take it personal because my take on this is if people are going to take time out of their day to like rip on someone else online, I kind of feel bad for them, yeah. not me because yep. I wouldn't do that. But so, so be it. I put it out there. It happened. So I think it's just not taking it personal and just knowing that if you're going to put yourself out there online publicly for your business or personally, that has the potential to happen, but that it's okay. And it's not to take it to heart. So, right. You know, so anyway, that's what, that was that. Now I get questions like this all the time and I'm sure you do too, about like people just saying, I just want to go viral. You know, do you get that a lot? Yeah. I get more questions of people just saying like, I just want to get more views than I get now, but I don't get, I that don't... would be nice. <laughs> I don't get so many people think I want to go viral. I think a lot of people I work with are scared about the going viral yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because of what I just told you probably. But what, so you get that a lot. Yeah. So it, it's so hard to get this across to business owners that don't understand how it all really works. You know, so it's, it's tough because it's like, well, 
you would think virality with, you know, just getting a ton of eyeballs on your stuff that like, oh, that would be great. But what did that actually do for your business? Honestly, I mean, I gained some followers over on the social G page because I, I had have it in my bio of my personal Instagram. Sure. Now, I mean, there, these people are probably never going to, I'm never going to do say, business how many, with like, them. How many clients did you close? Z zero. The thing with the virality is, I mean, I really think it depends. Like if I had an e-commerce business where I was selling a product and I could like ship nationwide and you got hundreds of thousands of views, oh, and yeah, maybe yeah. Yeah. that could be something more where it might serve you to like to drum up sales potentially. But I think it just depends. Like what did it do for me? Honestly, a case study for me and vi going viral, which I think is great. I think I do kind of feel good doing what I do that I'm like, I can now say I went viral because yeah. I guess I, I never had a lot, lot in this way. But other than that, I think like, and you know this about me, like I'm a big believer in like, I don't think the, the numbers as far as like, I think I'd rather have an engaged community than a, you get a thousand likes, but really, I mean, that helps your profile, but like, are you gonna, is your business gonna grow? It depends on your business, I guess. Exactly. See, that's it. That's exactly what I was going for because that's one thing that we really try and have people focus on is the fact that you need to have an engaged audience that knows, likes, and trusts you. You know, because no one, no one is just like, oh yeah, like looking at this content creator that I like, you know, but they, don't talk about anything of value. They all they're doing is posting, you know, trendy shit to try and go viral. That's not a brand. That's a gimmick, you know. And and I think the the narrative needs to change from I just want to go viral to I just want to get consistent. Yes. You know, because, uh, like arguably, I feel like consistency is harder for most business owners that are like just stuck in ops and delivery. Like it's harder to stay consistent and upload every day than it is to try and go viral once. A hundred percent. I mean, I have a whole business because people can't consistently post. <laughs> right. Which I don't blame them because it's hard. And yeah. it's and the thing about social media, as we all know, it never ends. There's no end date, right? You're posting 365, you know, 24 seven, like there's a need. It's not like there's an off time for ever not posting in my right. opinion yeah. and I think the more that you post on and off on and off on and off like you might as well just not post at all I think because I, I think I just think it's don't have a presence or go all in on it and if you can't go all in on it totally understandable then outsource it or, or delegate it but don't delegate it to like your friend's daughter yeah don't like we like in we, my opinion <laughs> We have this internal joke that we that we always say that like, there's a reason Mercedes doesn't have their 22 year old office assistant film their commercials with their iPhone. I, I guess I feel strongly that hiring professionals that understand like strategy and brand and I think will I think there's more to just postings on social media than people understand and I think once they do understand it, then they get it. Yeah. Um, but I do think. You know, I don't think being young is the main qualifier for someone that should do your social media. Right. I mean. Yeah, just because they know how to post more than you do and they know, you know, a little bit more of how the platform's laid out. Like, the... I, I would even challenge people to think about the fact that like, and I'm, I, I will toot my own horn, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like I have a background in organizational development, meaning I sit down with business owners and I want to know everything about their business. Download me on how people interact with you, your goals, your sales, your operations, because that informs how we can talk about it to the outside too. Like Absolutely. It's, and I think it's like, there's so much more involved. So I think that, yeah, like I just think there's strategy and I, I yeah. So like, I think that's when I talk to people and they kind of like, they're like, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Cause it's not like, I don't know, nothing lives in a vacuum. After this kind of happened, like what were some things that you learned? Uh, I mean, it was super interesting, like I said, to see kind of like the numbers and the growth and like how, how short amount of time it just like, cause some people are like, it, it takes, you're like, 
you get a thousand views and it feels like hard. Like mm-hmm. it grew, it was like, man, that was a hard thousand. Yeah. This was just like, I mean, you, and you could just see it. You kind of could just see it with the comments mm-hmm. and like, so I just think that was interesting to me. Um, and I do think if you get to a certain number, I don't know what that number is, but I think like maybe it's more likely, like, I don't know if it's, you get past 10,000, but it felt like at certain number, it just almost just like it went out of control. Like yeah. it felt like, you yeah, know what I mean? Sense. Like it just, and then it was gone. So I kind of, that was interesting. You know, I also think that your content, like cultural relevance and being like on top of like things, like I, I heard this guy speak and he called it news jacking. Where like if you hit a news story or something happening culturally and you hit it at the right point, like it kind of can, you can kind of ride that wave. So like, mm. you know, kind of like a meme or some yeah. things, but more like if you're kind of in tune with what's kind of happening out there and like culture is super important. Like, mm-hmm. I just think like if, I, I think there's more there than meets the eye. And I'm not saying, you know, it has to be appropriate for your business, but I think that there's something that, that was there. Cause I think that fight, I think a lot of people are talking about that. Fight. Yeah. Yep. So like this was kind of like piggybacked on that a little. So I think that's important just to, you know, stay culturally relevant and on top of things Mm -hmm. in your marketing. The other thing I learned is like, I, it took me like a a minute. Like I didn't put a lot of thought into that reel. I I mean, I post a lot of reels right? and I haven't had this happen. So something about this one, I also, I also, yeah, I I think it was just the the commentary and everything, but not to overthink your content. Like I don't, I don't, I don't post things for the goal of getting views. And I think a lot of people do. And I think you can sense that. Like Mm -hmm. I want to post things because I enjoy it and I think it's funny (laughs) and maybe you do, maybe you don't, but that like I post out of like my enjoyment, but then also like maybe someone else will think this is kind of funny too. Like I, Mm -hmm. and I, that is how I even started my business is people would come to me and say, I just love what you post. It just, makes me laugh. I kind of look for it now. And I was like, Oh really? And you won't be, and people said to me, said that to me in person, like Mm -hmm. that. I just, I was like, wow, I didn't know that. It makes like, that's what I think people should make content for. Yeah. So like, cause you enjoy it and you want other people to enjoy it and it's genuine. I mean, and so that can go for personal, but I think it can go for business a little too. Like what, like, would you want to view this? So those were some takeaways. Like we tell people all the time, you need to create content for you first, because if you don't create for you, then you're just going to stop doing it. Like Mm -hmm. I, you know, I like the, um, the philosophy of doing, we, we call it like one, uh, soul filling video a week. Mm, I like that. So like for, for me, it's just something personal. Like I'm really into firearms and competition shooting and stuff. So this week I posted a, um, like a, just a little five second reel of like my draw times getting better, you know, and that gets a lot of engagement because it's something that people can relate to and that, you know, people genuinely enjoy seeing other people genuinely enjoy things, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's why like I wanted to start the podcast too, because I can talk about this shit all day. I like, I think we drive a lot better, more organic or organic's not the right word. Um, more authentic type content. It's more like, I want people to feel like, I want people to feel like they, like the, how they would in person, hopefully if I spend time with them, yeah. where like you get to know someone, you kind of get to know what they're about. Like, and I think that's important. And I think even as a business owner, if even if you have a large business, like people want to know things about the people that work at your company. Oh, a hundred percent. And so I, I don't think there's any, I think the people should think about, I don't think it has to be your deep, dark secrets, but I do mm-hmm. think like, well, yeah, what are you, who are you? What are you about? Like, give me a yeah. fun, give me something interesting to, to share with your audience. So I've right. seen the highest and the, and the, and the data supports it. Mm-hmm. Posts like that, I can tell you, will do better than, you know, hey, we're doing this promotion. <laughs> I mean, yeah. so, and I think that's okay to weave in, but right. yeah. People buy from people. People don't buy from businesses. 
You know, they don't buy from, you know, such and such manufacturing. They buy from Steve, the sales guy who works for that company, who they really like, mm -hmm. you know, and who really made them feel important. You know, so I think that's also very important in your content because like, you know, I, I tell people this all the time. Like I am the same person here as I am everywhere else in life so that, you know, when people meet me out in person, you know, even when they like this, um, this quarter zip has become like a part of my brand because I don't, I don't know, like I've just worn it in a few videos and people started like recognizing me by it. Mm -hmm. And now when I meet people out in public, like at networking events and stuff like that, people already know who I am because mm -hmm. they're like, I've seen your face somewhere, you know, and, and then they get it. So I feel like that's really important as well. And like, do you get that too? Yeah. So as you can see. <laughs> from because I knew we were doing this today, mm -hmm. right? And I go, oh, I'll get my little social G shirt on, my little yellow earrings, and I, I hate to say like always be branding, and it's not even like like that, you know. But like I do think it's important that people like when people think about social media, I want them to think about me. Yeah. Like I want them to go, you know what? You know, I mean that's the whole I think point is that that's why you do social media in a way is because it's it's giving people like this constant drumbeat of like this is what I do here's who I am and then when and if they need your services or someone they know needs help Mary Gunther yeah. you know what I mean social gco and in my before I did I started social gco and I still do my wine business like I'm into wine tasting wine I mean, I think I just posted a reel the other week. Someone like mailed me wine stickers because they go, I thought of you. And they huh. mailed me wine stickers. And I have multiple people, hey, I thought of you. I got you this wine opener. Hey, I thought of you. I got like, so now like I have made myself synonymous with wine, which I'm totally cool with. Um, but <laughs> I do because I have a wine business too. And like, so that's the thing is like, you can do it. You can do it in a, way that doesn't gross people out and i think yeah. it's just like you're passionate about it you're sharing knowledge and then you're at you're giving value like yeah. you give a lot of value to people for f no cost right. at all but i do have a question for you yes how many quarter zip ups do you own is it like superman oh, in your how closet <laughs> like <laughs> Like 10? Like so <laughs> I do, so I have two of these and I have oh. three of the gray ones okay. and one of the black ones. Okay, so almost one for every day of the yes. week. Okay, good. Okay, so you're not just... You're well, I not also just... have a bunch of other private apparel as well, but that's always been my thing is like, I love our logo so much because I didn't make it. And like, I just, like even designing the studio, I was like, I want the logo is in as many places as we can put it, mm -hmm. you know? And that's exactly what they did here. Let's talk about your mission video for a minute. Mm. I wanna talk specifically, like not about the, the video itself, but I wanna talk about what you did with it. But like what you had told me about, I think it was at a Rockford or a Walker Chamber thing. Mm -hmm. and, and and toward the end of your presentation, you, well, actually, I'm gonna let you tell the story. Okay, so we got the video from you. Um, obviously, immediately put it on my website just obviously towards the top of who we are. Uh, um, social media, you know, took clips from that. And I still, I actually, th that thing has way more legs. I'm gonna be using it more as well. Because once you have it, like, you know, I say use, bring it back. People use right. it one and done. You gotta keep doing it. So even me, I gotta get back to that. And then I did incorporate it in a presentation to show people an example of, you know, a video you can get made as well that just, talks to your target audience and like identifies their problem and positions you as the person that can provide the solution. So I did it in a presentation. From that presentation, got a lot of great connections and leads, but I, again, video tells a story that a PowerPoint slide alone could never tell. Mm -hmm. Like as far as the, so I just, people, you know, I think I use it to, sh to show an example, I you probably feel this pressure that we you have we have to do what we're telling people to do in our yeah. own businesses, 
And so, you know, I, I like to show people that how we have used video in our own marketing as well. So yeah, because didn't you say toward the end of that like presentation that you had something written out, but at the last minute you were like, mm, nah, let me just show you a video. Yeah. I mean, basically I had it embedded and I had just, I had to, uh, I had been torn like should I should I spend two minutes of this time I have to sh like pr promote my art business at the end right mm -hmm. in a way but I think it drove home it was more like this is what we did and this is what you could do too so it, it wasn't you know and I think it helped to just drive home the point because the presentation was about you know the power of video yeah and in all its forms short form long form website you know these stats like people's brains process video 95% versus like in writing to 10%. Like mm -hmm. your brain just processes it faster. Oh yeah. So I mean, it's just like statistically or like just the data shows the power of video. It's not even like we're just saying, yeah, video's better. It's actually a fact that it's more impactful. Yeah, well, and it's the only marketing medium that can make you feel or rather make your prospects feel any way you would like them to in less than 30 mm -hmm. seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, like I can't do that reading a post. I can't do that looking at a photo. I can't do that reading a blog, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, like we always try and drive that home. It's like, yes, video is expensive and whatever, but there's a reason mm -hmm. for it, you know? And and also like if if you're not doing video, like no one knows who you are. Like they, you know, yeah, you can be posting and writing and whatever, but no one really knows, you know, no one, no one sees your, like how you are in real life, mm -hmm. you know, and that is a huge trust thing for a lot of people is like, well, I don't know who the hell I'm working with, you know, because like <laughs> we discussed this in the last podcast, like I don't, you know, I don't drive with everybody and everybody definitely does not drive with me, you know? So I like, I think that's also very important to make sure that, you know, people know who they're dealing with mm -hmm. beforehand. For sure. And another thing video can do is provide clarity and certainty to potential buyers. So there's like three psychological needs of buyers. Mm. It's clarity, certainty, and like collaboration. But like clarity, like people are drawn to clarity, like drawn to clear ideas and like averse to confusion. Yep. If it's confusing, like people are like, I don't want to hear it. Goodbye. It's too hard. mind doesn't buy. It does. It's true. And then certainty that you can, you can solve their problem. And here's how you can solve their problem. How do you measure your results when it comes to video? Like outside of just like views and engagement and stuff, like how, how do you teach people to know like what good looks like? I think there's like best practices that, you know, right? Like you have your hooks, right? Like there's things you can do to like, that we know that works to get people like catch their eye. Mm. As far as how I can get people to like teach them like what's a good video, I think people need to get clear on their content areas. So, you know, what, what are the things, like what are our goal, like what are your goals posting on social media? Usually it's gonna be sales at some point level it's sales mm -hmm. but it's also like building a deeper relationship you know um teaching people things like there's other areas that i think need to be included um so to do i guess to say what's a good video i mean yeah views but i think engagement on the video is a bigger indication than even views because if people view it but then they're like great next versus take the time to like comment or tag someone else. I think that is tells a bigger story. So um, I do think engagement, when I start seeing bigger engagement on videos, I feel like that's a good indicator of like, that was a good, that was a good reel. And I, but I also think like people don't experiment enough either. Like, so I know mm -hmm. we've been saying, it's like mixed messages. Sometimes you don't know if something's going to be good and you just got to try it and see. Like, I don't, I think, um, sometimes even I post things that are like, this is going to be so awesome. It's not first, <laughs> like metric wise. Mm -hmm. And then th things that you're just like, Oh, okay. And then it really resonates. And that just goes to show even professionals. Like I have a hard time, like 
you always have to be thinking like, what does your audience want to see? Right. Versus like what I think is funny, right? Yeah. Like it's hard though to take yourself out of that. So those are some things I really like. I really like to look at engagement more than even impressions sometimes. I agree. You know, because your your impressions could be anybody. I, I think with seeing people commenting or even like conversions, saves like on, uh, I think it's just Instagram you can save stuff on. Um, but even like that stuff, like people saying, hey, I wanna come back to this. You know, I think that's, yeah. that's also very big. And what I like to tell people is like, if you can't come up with a content idea, just answer frequently asked questions mm -hmm. because that's what your audience has already told you they wanna know. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why, and, and I also like recycle a lot of stuff because not everyone hears your message the first time. You know, like my, my mission video, I re-upload once a month because mm -hmm. there's more people that have no idea that we exist. Mm -hmm. Creating content with like one customer in mind, I've also found is really, mm -hmm. really profound. It, it also kind of like allows us to create like skits around it too, you know, because we have the like more access to be able to do stuff like that because I have a content team. But I mean, that stuff anyone can do. Mm -hmm. You just grab yourself a tripod and, you know, grab yourself a little commitment and courage and, you know, get it done. Yeah. I think people get overwhelmed with content because they think they have to come up with original content every time. And you should 100% be looking at your data on even just in meta or even like if you have business pages, you have access to data Yeah. and you should be looking at that. And if high performing posts, 100% you should be repurposing and high performing organic posts, you should be putting money behind instead yeah. of creating an ad that you've like, that you think I, might the data well, like yeah. that, that if more people just did that alone, that would be a huge impact to most businesses if they just like just took a look at those things more. Yeah, I agree. Like we even do so like we like when we do video ad campaigns, we start organic. Mm -hmm. You know, and and we'll test, you know, different hooks and um, you know, different call to actions and different copy and stuff like that and then whatever one does the best organically with their their audience that they already have mm -hmm. is what we choose to boost. I've seen your post that you're like, it's the same video, but different hooks or different mm -hmm. messages. And it's really interesting Yeah, because it's like the same video. Yeah. You know, it's just it's how same you're video. positioning it and talking to whoever the, you know, whoever the person is you're talking to. So yeah, it is, a, it is an art form. And like, you know, here's the thing. Most business owners like didn't start a business in whatever business field they're in. They have a passion about that. They right. don't have a passion like you and I do about all of this and right. they're, they're being expected to like, you know, do this stuff now as part of business. And I think that, I don't, I don't think that most people, I think most people should, should be consulting with other outside professionals because it's, it's hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's hard for us sometimes, you know I mean? It's not like it's, I mean, you know, you make it look easy. <laughs> But you know what I mean? It's it's an I'm always reading trends. I'm always keeping up with the latest in this. So I mean, we're talking today, and if we talked in a year from now, it might be different. Yeah, even. it would definitely yeah, be different. It would. What are some common misconceptions that you think you know local businesses have about social media marketing, especially when it comes to video? Because like your people that you work with are in a totally different stage of business than than mine. So I always like to see this like different perspective from social media managers as opposed to just us, mm -hmm. you know? Here's what I see out there. I see a lot of people that think that they're gonna start to push video or do consistent social media and a few months go by and they're like, I'm not getting sales. Like what? what's the ROI here? <laughs> and A, it takes longer, right? but also like, B is, it's such a hard thing because I understand people are like, I'm investing in this and they want to see some inbound stuff coming in, which it will come, right. but it takes a, it takes a while because you got to just, there's things you got to kind of got to tweak over time to figure out what is working, what is getting people to reach out for leads, right? And it can happen. You experience it in your business. I've experienced it in my business and for my clients when you start to like, take that turn of like, okay, we are getting some like, you know, some uh, momentum here. 
So, but that being said is like, you're not just going to do social media for a little bit and then like your business is going to like become a trillion dollar business. No. Like I think social media like also is like, it's not even an option anymore. A, you need to have one. So mm -hmm. to me, you're paying for people to provide you content or these services. Well, what's the ROI on that? Like how much time are you saving out of your day for as the CEO? Like you're paying like, you know we do what we can with to do good social media marketing, but there's other things involved besides us posting that help drive sales. And yep. I think that's just a miss. Like, I think that's just like a little bit of a misperception that, you know, I try and educate people on too. Like this is going to work together with your, you know, your website, like what's your, and this is why I ask questions about their process and, in, and how do they interact with customers? Mm -hmm. Because if it's too hard, I can drive people to a website all day if that's not great or if there's like weird barriers in place, then that's an issue. So I think, you know, social media for, for us, social media marketing quickly turns into higher level advising and business uh, advice that I didn't anticipate when I started this business that how much it really you know, how much it really does all play together. Like it's easy to I'm just going to do your social media management there's, it, it can quickly snowball. But so that's what I think a big misperception is. Um, just generally, I think with people on social media, I think there's a lot of moving parts there. And I'm glad that you brought that up too, that it's, it's not a instant fix. You know, it's not like you're not going to post a video today and money just rains from the sky. Like it doesn't happen. You know, because I, so I had to explain this to someone the other day on a um, discovery call. And it was that, well, because he was doing like lead generation websites and stuff like that. And he was like, well, I get those like every day. Like I'm getting leads every day because I'm spending like, you know, a thousand dollars or whatever on this website. So why can't you get me that same conversion right away? Here's the thing that they're not considering is that one you being on a lead generation website puts you in the same pond with a bunch of freaking fish that all look like you. Mm -hmm. There's nothing different about you other than your experience. And if your like if your price is higher than everyone else, just because you have more experience, most people don't care. You know, because if you go to a lead generation website, you're just looking to get shit done. You know, and and this is a trades guy, so it's even worse in construction. Mm. We are introducing your audience and your local community to you as a person and your expertise. Mm -hmm. We're building no like and trust in you as mm -hmm. the service provider so that when the time comes that someone is ready to go, you either get that referral or they come work with you and they don't bid. You know, and people also know by the content that you post about what your price range is as well because how you present yourself is a direct correlation with what you do in your business, you know? So like, I, I tell this to people all the time, I'm like, you know, people that buy from the used car lot are not shopping for exotic cars on the weekend. It just doesn't happen. They don't even consider going to an exotic car dealership because they know they can't afford it, you know? And they know they're going to be out of place. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, and not like money shaming people, but, you know, we want to isolate ourselves from the people that we don't want to work with and attract the people that we do, mm -hmm. you know? And, and also at any given time, only 3% of your market is ready to buy. Mm -hmm. And the further 17% below that are in research and, you know, information gathering mode. So in those, you're competing with referrals, you're rep uh, competing with like direct mail, uh, cold email, ads, like lead gen websites, all of those things are vying for about 12% of your entire market at any given time. And they don't see any difference between you and the next guy. Yeah. Whereas we can take someone from not knowing that you even existed to holy shit, shut up and take my money in like a couple months. Mm -hmm. You know, I spoke to a guy yesterday who's been following me for two years yeah, I see. and he was like, yeah, dude, like I've just been watching you grow. And like, I finally felt like the time was right. I've never seen his name before ever. He's mm -hmm. never engaged with anything. He's never left a comment, anything. He's just been lurking for two years, 
you know, but people don't see that. So this is like a perfect point that what we just talked about, like people are watching and it doesn't matter if it's 43 people on a reel or hundreds or people you don't even see that are watching. People are watching number one. So when you said people are researching in the kind of that phase, I, people are researching, where are they researching? Your website, your social media presence, and what are they gonna find when they come to your social media presence? Are they gonna find a post from 2019 and that's it? <laughs> are they gonna find content that's like stale, to be honest, and like just a bunch of Canva graphics? Or are they gonna find video? Are you gonna have a pin post of who you are and your brand video? And are they going to be able to go, you know what? I get a really good sense of who this person is, what this company is about. And like by just visiting these social media sites, which most people are doing in the morning and in the evenings research. So like it's no longer about closing the deal in person. I can, I meet with people all the time. Guess what they go do? They go look at all your stuff when they're like in bed or in the morning. And if it's not, if you're not closing the deal on social media or on your website, like you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose people. And like, that's how important it is. And another point I was gonna say is what you said about um, lead generation. You know, leads can be bought. Yeah. Leads can also be essentially like, if you just have a solid organic social media strategy that includes video, like, yes, it's time and effort and there is investment there, but like I would venture to say the leads that come in then from that are actually going to be more likely to buy from you than just random leads that there's, that you can purchase. Like it, Absolutely. I'd rather, and I just re rather have a, a actual real lead. And if that's one, if it's one or two people a month versus, oh, I just bought 20 and they're not even good leads. Right. It's just, I think it's all about quality in that. It, everything can be bought. You can buy an Instagram following. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Let's talk about some um, just kind of practical tips around specifically local businesses and like the, the types of people that you work with and, and like what practical things can they use in their own social media marketing, especially when it comes to video, to stay relevant and make sure that they're putting out content that is actually going to resonate with their audience. Well, I, I, I want to go back to like kind of what you had mentioned before. Like I do think every company should do this probably, I don't know how long, once a year at least, I don't know when, but the, you know, figuring out who's your persona of the person that is you're selling to, like what, who's your audience? And everyone says that. And it's like this big thing, like who's your audience? Who are you talking to? 18 to but, 65, yeah, married right. and single and lives oh. everywhere. You right. Know? You can't be every, like everyone's cup of tea and you shouldn't be because your business is like meant for a certain type of person that like that you're going after and so it is hard to figure out it's it is hard to figure out for a lot of business owners because you're like well i could sell to everyone well ha you know who have you sold to the most who, right. how you know do some like data mining there mm -hmm. um you know I, I i think the more specific you can get with that the better and i think people are scared to talk to just like one segment because they're like well I'm going to make all the other people feel bad because I'm not talking to them. Right. Like if, if you're talking to like women or if you're talking to like single moms or just a, a very small demo, then you think you're just going to hurt your business, but really you're going to be able to find the people that actually are for you versus just this blanket marketing. Um, well, and more importantly, they find you. You know, when the content feels like, like I get these comments all the time, get out of my head. You know, like, like were you, <laughs> my favorite one was, have you been peeking in my office window? Like at all the problems that I'm dealing with? You know, because we have such a solid pulse on what it is that our very narrow customer base is looking for and what they're dealing with. You know, and what are like the, the goals that they have for their lives and how can we kind of play into those and like mm -hmm. sell the vacations. For example, like all of the people that we work with are just like me. You know, they're all like 
loud, on edge, like, you know, a, a little, like, unapologetically authentic. You know, they're, they're the ones that you can, you know, do a shoot with and go grab drinks with after. Mm -hmm. You know, those types of people. And I think, you know, like, that's why people like you and I get along so well. And, like, even, you know, Alicia and I from uh, Flamingo, it is scary at first to to say like okay i'm not gonna talk to these people like i'm i'm going to completely polarize myself mm -hmm. but it's necessary 100 percent. and i think to, to relevant or tips for video for people that's one another one i would say is like learn like if you have a phone like take some time to learn how to actually do some things on your phone to take good video like even just lighting and I'm not saying you have to be an expert, but there's a lot you can do on an iPhone. I had enrolled in this iPhone uh, photo academy. I mean, it's really amazing. Yeah. Even just things, tips and tricks for, for cool video effects and filters. There's a really lot you could do there. So like if you're relying on your phone heavily, investing in some of that I think is worthwhile and just kind of like a brass tacks tip. I also think that people overthink this a lot and i think that sometimes just like we just posted the friday morning tip this morning was about uh, progress over like perfection like just do the video go live whatever it is you don't 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 retake it 10 times because on the 10th time you do this video it's gonna be weird you're gonna feel weird like the and the faster like you can do it and just be natural and and then the more you do it the better you get at it People are like, you're so good at this. You know, how'd you just whip that that 30 second video out and you just, you know, talked and, cause I've been doing it for like four years. So I've done it a thousand right. times. Like I, but like the, you'll get better, but also don't be afraid, like post imperfect things. Like it right. doesn't have to be like, and I know you're in the professional video world and I think professional video works great with not so professional video, right? Like a mix of mm -hmm. like, phone and really nice polished messaging and what you provide like and I think they can all work together but sometimes I think there's so much we can do I you know iPhones are basically have better capabilities than like movie cameras did like 30 years ago like yep. you know what I mean like that quality so mm -hmm. we have so many great things going for us as business owners now I mean we have the ability to just market ourselves on social media and like be front and center and take quick video and photos. And I think that people's mindset around it really holds them back. And instead of looking at it as like, I joke, but a lot of my clients, they hate social media. Yep. And I don't, I, I, I get it. But I think if you're going to do social media and actually give it a go, you can't hate it. Right. Cause it's going to, it's going to feel like that. Yep. <laughs> Everyone's going to be able to tell that, <laughs> yeah. that you absolutely hate what you're doing. Yes. What would you say to the people who are sick of seeing their own content, even though no one else has actually seen it? You know, like, like, you get what I'm talking about? Like there was, you know, this case study where, um, like the marketing manager for like a huge food chain kept telling their, their marketing like department, Hey, I'm so tired of seeing this ad. Like, when are we going to get new ones? It hadn't even gone out yet. So what do you have to say to those people who are, who are positive that, oh, well, I've posted this before. Like, I've posted something about this. I don't want to do it again because I'm afraid that, you know, people aren't going to like that or, you know, whatever. What, what would you have to say to that? What I would say is people have to see things... 16 times more to even like start to like understand the message like you have to see things a lot of times and we all do it like I don't see something online the first time and be like I'm gonna buy that rarely right. <laughs> rarely rarely usually it's like it's an, a, over the course of many weeks and months but so a I would tell them like nothing is a one and done like, especially if it's like, if it is the message you want to be sending, like you said, you post your brand video once a month and because people, not everyone does see everything you post. Like if you really look at the metrics, however many followers, followers you have, and then you see how many views, 
there's clearly a gap and more people have have missed this. Yep. So like I would say that's number one. I would say number two is, you know, the days of like, Mad Men and, you know, ad, like advertising mm -hmm. where like people would sit around in a room and come up with a concept yeah. and like put it on a billboard and like that's a lot of corporate kind of marketing is like in my mind, like it's a new day now. Like you should be doing things like, and this is where social media is a great testing place, like put out content see what's resonating with your audience. Like let your audience drive your marketing a little. Like, cause there might be things that you're like, well, this doesn't seem right to me, but people really like it. So give them, give the people what they want. Like, I don't know when someone decided like, you know, one person in a department is like the marketing, all time marketing decision maker for like, masses of people yeah do you know what i mean so i yeah. think like that's kind of so for someone whatever someone's opinion is like when are we doing something new if it's working you should you should do something new or you should do something new in conjunction with what you're already doing yeah so I, broke, don't fix it yeah <laughs> i and i also think marketing is like one of these areas and this is coming from me who had a career in human resources for years, okay? And I did, I did, I had my hands on a lot of things, but that was, this was not my, like, I don't have a degree in it. Um, marketing, I think, is one of those things that, like, everyone just thinks they can do. Yep. Well, because it's such <laughs> like, a, it's, it's such a broad term. Yeah. It's like, because marketing is technically, you writing down your phone number on a piece of paper uh, about, you know, some thing that you have at your house and posting that on the side of the highway. Like, people do that all the time. That is technically marketing, you know? But what we're doing is on just a, it, it's on a different planet, you know? And, and I think that is another huge misconception is that, oh, well, it's social media, you know? Like, oh, anybody can do it. Well, then why aren't you? Yes, and if you are and you're not getting what the results you think you should be getting, then I think there's more questions to be asked there too. And again, a lot of people think they can also like do bookkeeping and other things. Right. I, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm one of those people. It's not, just mar <laughs> it's not just marketing. And if I could say anything, and this is more like probably like a, turning into like an entrepreneur podcast, but like the faster you get things off your plate that you know you're not qualified to do, you don't know how to do well, and you can hire someone or outsource that, that do do it better, and like the better off you're gonna be. How do you stay ahead of trends, especially when it comes to video? You know, like like we already talked about like your viral video, you know, how do you stay on top of that type of stuff? I mean, just honestly, old fashioned ways, like I follow certain people online, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I don't have much time to read, so I listen a lot to certain uh, people that are influential in the in the industry or on top of this stuff. There's so many resources you can get. Like, we're, I signed up for an AI newsletter. Like, literally, I get daily updates on what's happening with AI, which is a lot. Um, and I think it's just good, even if you have 30 seconds to quick read it. You just gotta stay on it. Like, so I, I do a lot of that. I like shocked with people like you and like in industry, you know, partnering or, or side by side industries kind of stay up to date that way. So, um, but you have to, I mean, but I would even venture to say in any industry, whatever you're in, I feel like it's, you're going to be better off as a business owner. If you are keeping your eye on what's happening, technology, AI trends, all sorts of stuff right now, it's this, it could be something different, you know, very soon. So yeah. that's kind of what I do. Yeah, you know, and I'm I'm one of those people who like I I hate trends with a burning passion because they're here today and gone tomorrow. And human psychology and how people consume content has not changed ever. You know, it the mediums have changed. You know, and we need to stay on top of those because reels didn't exist before COVID. You know, like the, like that wasn't a thing until TikTok came around. You know, and now like TikTok in nine months isn't even going to be a thing anymore. You know, so those types of things we have to stay on top of. But, you know, I, I do see that a lot where people get a little too caught up in that, you know, and that's why I was, 
you know, really looking to ask someone like yourself because you have to stay on top of these things. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to know, I wanted to know kind of like what those people who are, you know, super obsessed with that should be doing in, you know, conjunction with someone like yourself. What they should be doing to stay on top of things, mm -hmm. all the things I just mentioned, but like you said, trends come and go, right? Um, but they're important to stay on top of. Mm -hmm. But I think there are some universal truths about video or storytelling that if you understand those things, I think no matter what the trend, that you'll be you'll be able to kind of like take the hits with different trends. Meaning, you know, for thousands of years, there's been the concept of like story, folk tales, folklore, like all these. That's how people used to do reels. Yeah. <laughs> it's like singing <laughs> songs by the fire. And I think so like a lot of, so what I'm going to say right now is, is a lot of Donald Miller stuff, which this, he's like the storytelling guy, mm -hmm. but like a lot of marketers, position themselves as the hero. Yep. There's the hero's journey when really as a business owner, you want to be positioning, positioning yourself as the guide to the hero, the consumer, the customer is the hero. Mm -hmm. You're the guide. You're not the hero. So that's just the flip of a mindset. And when you start to understand that concept and then you look at people's marketing and social media, you're like, they're making themselves the hero. The, like you can start to see it and yeah. you're like, that's a key part of like resonating. I think is, is just understanding that. So if you haven't heard, like looked into this, I mean, the hero's journey is basically right. The hero's living his life happy. He's doing great. A problem happens. He goes off on a journey. Usually he runs across a guide that helps get him through the challenge and then comes out successful and is, you know, lives happily ever after. Like that's the the gist of it. So I don't know if that answered your question about how to how people can stay on top of trends. I think staying current's important, but I think knowing fundamentals and being able to like understand those things will help you to like that's feel lot, the trends. It's a lot more important her. I think it is. <laughs> I mean don't you know what I mean? Just like there's some basic truths. Yeah. What's something that you feel like separates a good social media manager or a good social media marketer from a great social media marketer? Oh, that's such a hard question. I mean, you know, because it's you so and I can, can take a look at someone's profile and just know, you yeah. know, but what are those things? Yeah, it's hard. I mean, it's just, it is, it's such a thing, you know, because I also feel like it's subjective sometimes. Like, I'm like, this is great. This is good. Like, but what I'll say is this. I think we all know when we're in our beds at night scrolling, <laughs> at least me, like, what are you stopping on? What are you, what, what makes you watch something? And now for everyone, that's a little different, but I think that like, we all kind of know what's, what's okay and what's like really good. And I, I'm a big humor person. I like, I think humor and like wittiness goes a long way. Yep. A long way. And I think that sometimes that doesn't come as natural to others as some, but you know, we already talked about the basics of like your audience and, and, and this and that. I think what, what between good and great is going to be consistency. I mean, go back to that a hundred percent because that's the biggest thing that I see that people don't do. Getting to know their audience and like in, in engaging with the audience and like, and if people are leaving comments, you're responding back. Like, I think that's important. Um, and I also just think like, just understanding your company, your brand, what you stand for, and being able to like effectively communicate that consistently. And that's like seems easy, but it's not easy. So I don't know. I, it's such a hard, like what, what makes great versus good? I think there's a lot of things and I think we've covered a lot of those, but I would just say, are you making content that you would actually want to see? <laughs> like sometimes, yeah. I, sometimes I make stuff and I'm like, 
I'm starting over. Like, yeah. it's, you know what I mean? Done so that. I think it's being, <laughs> it's being able to like really be honest about it. Yeah. And I also think like as a business owner, or I think here's a tip. You don't have to, you don't have to put a, ho- a happy holiday. Uh, you don't have to say, celebrate every holiday on your social media. <sighs> Like I that like, bothers me like so much. I don't think you have to. I I just really you don't. You don't because it's all all that is is <laughs> hey don't forget about us today. That's it. Yeah, I mean I the, and how like your say, content should be solid enough that you have that already. Uh, yeah, and I think again I think it depends on what it is. But even like let's just say Memorial Day is coming up. Everyone's gonna be like every business happy Memorial Day like at least find a video of a flag flying Yeah, <laughs> like if you're like <laughs> Like I just I think what people I, I think what people think social media is is Here's our latest product happy holidays I guess can that could be okay, but what makes you great is not gonna be that yeah. So maybe it's more like what doesn't make you great. <laughs> and I feel, and this is not to offend anyone. It's just to be honest in that you need to rethink that strategy because that could be a very well the reason why you are so frustrated and spinning your wheels is because like the efforts you are making isn't the right efforts. Right. You know? I have two questions left. First of all, what is a question that you wish I would have asked you today? Again, maybe going back to, I think... People about my about people's basically mindsets around this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I always tell people, like you need to get your mind right about social media. For some reason, social media is like a topic that is like somehow like really hot button <laughs> for some people. Like yep. they have strong opinions. You know, social media. I hate it. I hate it. It's ruined the world. I oh, you know. Zuckerberg, like Meta, like just all sorts of opinions and social media and their thoughts. And I don't know, I, I, it's one of those things, like people just have very strong feelings about it. I would say to people, if you can't get over the hump on your thoughts about social media or you're fighting it still in 2024, I would tell you that like you really need to like rethink that and like your mindset around social media needs to change at the end of the day it's a business tool Mm -hmm. and like your business doesn't care about what your personal thoughts are on social media right just because you're not on social media every day doesn't mean millions of people aren't on it every day so again i think taking people need to take themselves out like of the equation and their your views on it like and realize that there's there's things happening out here that if you don't get on board with, like, I just think it's a bad business decision. And that means for video, that means for social media. And it's also meaning now AI, which I know you talk a lot about, and you know people that are really involved with AI and staying on top of it. Like I'm hearing, like if you don't start embracing AI now in your business and some level, like start to incorporate it, like you will be out of business in 10 years, if not sooner. Like that's how fast this could potentially grow. So I do think we're like in like, so that being said, if you're not on board with social media, I got news. It's about to get even wilder, I think. (laughs) And I I think that embracing it, and if you can't embrace it, then I'll embrace it for you. Right. Find, find, find someone, someone that will. Find someone that will. And be able to do what you don't want to do or can't do. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Finally, I, I'm trying to ask this to everybody that, um, that I have on the podcast now. What is something that you have never told anyone about you? Never? <laughs> it says never. Like Ooh. nobody knows. <sighs> Oh man, so many things, but I'm trying to think which one I want to share. <laughs> Fair enough. I think one thing that no one knows about or I've never told anyone, and this isn't like the deep dark secret, but as a child, like I always would have rather sat at the table with the adults than played with the kids. Me too. <laughs> what the hell? That's, that's wild. Because... That, like, 
my so everyone in my family has always said that about me. Yeah. Always. That's why. <laughs> See, I'm so we're glad I started souls. doing that. We're we're like we're we're like we were just like five year olds and so sophisticated, right? Yeah. Like we're just old souls like that, I think. But. And now we've gone backwards. But <laughs> and yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So, Mary, where can people find you? You can find me at the Social G Co on Instagram, Facebook, Mary Gunther on Instagram, LinkedIn, and thesocialgco.com is our website. Good stuff. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys have any questions for Mary, um, drop them in the comments. And if there's anything else that you'd like to see from us in the future, just let me know. And until next time, we'll see you soon.